So what we want to do is a couple of things so we can go deeper into the points we made. Um, what we'll do are two things. One, we're going to get you to discuss. It's found that one of the best ways to learn anything is to teach it. So what we're going to look at, what we're going to get you to do is discuss some of the points we've already gone into, particularly the first three of these six things to be avoided. And then also look at what practical things we need to change and what we can change, and what we're ready to change. As we mentioned earlier, the whole idea of Krishna consciousness is that it is a science. And as we mentioned, and you know, we keep repeating it, is that your experience of this devotional science, this wonderful spiritual adventure, has a lot to do with how wisely and how elegantly you're applying these teachings. <clears throat> so application is our key word. So we mentioned these three different points by Rupa Goswami that need to be avoided. As he says, one's devotional service is spoiled when he becomes too entangled in the following six activities. For the, so the first one was what? What was the first one? Yes, overeating. Eating more than necessary or collecting more funds than required. The second one was? Yes. Yes, over-endeavoring for mundane things that are very difficult to obtain. And the last one we spoke about was? Prajalpa. Okay, yes. I think people would remember that one. Okay, so let's do this as a, as a beginning exercise. The first one, well the first thing I want you to do is we're going to ask you to break into pairs and I'd like you to speak about in your own life this principle, actually no, let's take it, let's take it back. You can speak of any of these three, okay? So, between eating more than necessary or collecting more funds than required, that's number one. Over-endeavoring for mundane things that are very difficult to obtain, number two. And the third one is prajalpa. We're going to ask you to pair up and we're going to ask you to share honestly with your partner which of these three you think is the one that you should most work on. Mm, like that, okay? So think about that, yeah? If it's the case that you feel that none of these three are important or you're, you're doing excellently on all of these three, right? Okay, and I know I've heard things about this yet, but we won't go into that right now. But if you feel that you're, you're doing fine on all of these three, then we'd like you to share your realization on why these three are important and what others can do to improve or to give up these things. Remember what we spoke about, we said it's not just a question of giving up, but we're often able to give up something because we replace it. Or we have some practical strategy of doing things differently, so we have a lasting positive result. Okay, so I repeat, the first three, and this is what we're going to discuss in your pairs, the number one was overeating or over collecting, right? collecting more funds than necessary. Second one was over-endeavouring for mundane things which are difficult to obtain. And the third one was talking unnecessarily about mundane subject matters, okay? So in your pair, you're going to share either which of these three you feel are the most important for you to work on and how you feel practically you can do that. Or if you feel that none of these things, are, you know, you're doing very well in all of these areas, then we'd like you to share with your partner your realization on why these things are important to let go of and strategies that others can use to minimize or to let go of these three things which spoil one's devotional service. We encourage you to be as honest as possible. Yeah? Bear in mind that when you're sharing with each other, because you are offering these are, this is pretty luxury, and also you're revealing your mind, right? You're inquiring, you're sharing. You're assisting another devotee. If we make this, and as we make this part of our natural lifestyle, you'll see how Krishna will take care of you. And I don't say it theoretically, I see in my own life 
how, how I, I feel so often Krishna's kindness, how he's so extremely kind and so caring and helpful. And I'm sure many of you had experience. Sometimes you're in a situation, you need something, and then the person just turns up and says, Prabhu, do you, do you need this? Like then you think, my God. I was just thinking that I needed this or you know, I needed to know the answer to this particular question. And Krishna in the heart of that person has just said, you know my devotee needs this, I'd like you to go there and speak to him. Mm -hmm. So we're dealing with a very kind individual and we want to experience more in our relationship, in our service to this very wonderful, very attractive, very warm and loving, infinitely loving personality. Supreme Personality of Godhead. So we're going to give you, we'll say five minutes, okay? Is the assignment clear? Okay? We won't overload you, we just want you to go deep with what we've given, okay? So how, which of these three do you particularly need to work on? How do you intend practically to do that? And please don't give a theoretical answer. Please give something that you, that you are actually prepared to do, something you can do, and something that you will do. It's better that you say something small that you're going to do than say something that sounds great but you are, you're not actually going to implement in your life after the seminar. Okay? Please. Because we want to experience by application. Okay, so five minutes. Partner up starting from now. Hare Krishna. Okay, so a question. Oh, one more minute. Do you, okay, one one more minute. One more minute. Okay, just one one. <laughs> Okay, so we will need to continue. Can I have Hare Krishna? Hare Bro. Okay, Hare Krishna. Okay, so. Hare Bro. Hare Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you much. <laughs> Okay, so it's good. So we're all back together again. Okay, good. Um, how did you find the exercise? Yeah? Okay. Again, it's about application. So you'll hopefully have discussed something that you're prepared to do, that it's realistic for you, that will take us that bit closer, because we want to be in a position to receive more of Krishna's mercy. And by removing these things which are unfavorable, we will be in a better position to receive more of Krishna's mercy. We'll be more receptive and we'll be able to practice our devotional life on a higher or more refined way. Okay, so. Uh, maybe you can ask one group to give yes, yes. Let's hear a few so we can all learn. So, anyone would like to share? <laughs> Not, you can share what. Well, it is that you feel you need to work on and what you're going to do. Maybe a few, because it's good if you share, because in this exercise, when you're sharing with each other, you're actually, in that training, you're supporting and strengthening one another. And it's very, very powerful. It's powerful for building community. It's powerful for building relationship. And it's powerful for attracting the mercy of the Lord. When he sees his devotees supporting, encouraging, inspiring, the devotees. So we don't. Yes. Oh, hold on. If you so we can pass the microphone. Yes. Just. Uh, we talked a, a bit about Prajapa, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, we think that uh, uh, there is two things about this. Uh, one that uh, sometimes the the cause is that. Uh, 
for example, uh, if I, I'm not humble enough, and I, I'm think that I think that uh, I'm better in uh, some way that uh, than that other person, or I would be, uh, I would like to be better, mm -hmm. and uh, so uh, that can uh, cause this, and uh, uh, we can help it if we we try to glorify uh, that devotee mm -hmm. and concentrate on the on the good uh, qualities. Wonderful, wonderful, definitely. Thank you very much for sharing, for being bold and confident enough <laughs> to share. Is, it, is there anyone else who'd like to share? Anyone else like to share what they felt they wanted to work on and that they would practically work on after this session or this retreat? Not all at once. Would you like, probably, would you like to share? Because you've got the microphone in your hand. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I found out uh, about myself that I'm uh, overeating. Ah, <laughs> okay. Uh, I eat only prasad, but it's uh, too good. <laughs> <laughs> um, I uh, should do more um, uh, other activities also that... Uh, like uh, more, uh, more, more uh, physical uh, ah. um, activities to to process mm. it, this. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. That's fine. Oh, that's good. That's good. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who? <laughs> okay. <laughs> she got three children. Okay. Okay. And I want everything to be really nice in the house because of the deities. Mm -hmm. But I tend to say to my children, do this, make sure that's all right, that's all right. <laughs> so my way of actually changing that is to actually serve them. Mm. So rather than, because they're so busy with their school or whatever, when they're not there, it won't take me two minutes to just put the things away rather than criticize. Wow. So sorry. No, that's fine. <laughs> Thank you very much. You've actually reminded me of something. So, in a seminar that was facilitated by um, Bhakti Tirtamaraj, he was saying that when devotees reveal what they need to work on, when, when we're honest, in good association about what we need to work on, it actually helps us to change. It helps us to let go of some of the, the tendencies that cause that kind of behavior to take place. So the fact that you're able to share that, it, ta it takes humility to actually say that in front of everyone. It takes some humility. So the fact that you're able to share that is, is very, very special. You know? And ultimately, we want to hopefully be the kind of people who are tr so trustworthy that people can be open in association, knowing that it will be positively received in a healthy and mature way, and that we will encourage each other to grow. So thank you for sharing that. Okay. I know our time is a little bit limited, we've got another 20 minutes. So what I'm going to do is quickly run through the um, a few remainder points, and then we'll end for 6.30, with your permission. Is that okay, yeah? Okay. <clears throat> so, there are three other points that the nature of instruction gives as to things to avoid. Okay, so I'll just kind of do a little bit of a summary of these points. So we mentioned the first three. Number four is practicing the scriptural rules and regulations only for the sake of following them and not for the sake of spiritual advancement or rejecting the rules and regulations of the scriptures and working independently or whimsically. So sometimes there's a tendency where people will say silly things like, you know, you know, you know we, we just, we, we love, we're here to love Krishna, we don't worry about the rules, right? And there's this kind of craziness because we don't understand that actually Krishna consciousness is a relationship. You couldn't do that to any other person. You couldn't say, it doesn't matter how I treat them, we have a relationship. You couldn't do that. Because naturally, we're people. We know what it's like when we are treated a certain way, when we're hurt. Krishna's also a person. And actually, this whole devotional practice is actually all about relationship. The spiritual world is all about relationship. And therefore, 
There are natural ways that you deal with people that are favorable, that would inspire positive reciprocation, and ways that you deal with someone which will create enmity or negativity. Mm -hmm. So really when we talk about the rules and regulations, the rules and regulations are actually coming from people who love God. They love Krishna and they know therefore what we should do in order to reawaken our dormant love for that same personality. Mm -hmm. Now at the same time here it's talking about not going to one unbalanced point or the other. Very important point about this. And this is a, another secret that can help us in our spiritual life. We know that we can classify devotional service in three ways. I mean, well, into three categories. You have your sambanda, which is the knowledge, the theoretical knowledge. Sambanda Gyan. You have the abhideya, which is the devotional practices. And then you have the prayojana, which is the goal. A wise and intelligent devotee learns to see the prayojana through the abhideya. In other words, we learn to see the goal. We keep the goal in mind through the different activities or through the different um, principles or rules that we follow. So that way we understand that everything we're doing is actually for one purpose. We are trying to attain or to reawaken our dormant love for Krishna. Think about how profound this is. If you do your activities in remembrance of the goal, it can actually transform the entire quality of your experience. Right? Next time you're chanting, you're thinking this chanting is a struggle. But you remember that actually, this chanting is actually my ability or my opportunity to associate directly with Krishna, to purify myself, to return to the spiritual world where Krishna is there, I have my own eternal identity which will be revealed when I become fully pure in the spiritual kingdom. I have a particular service, a way of relating to Krishna. All of these things are present. Huh? If you keep the goal in mind, it can transform the quality of all your spiritual experiences. Huh? So the idea is we do follow. We follow the rules and regulations, but we follow them understanding the purpose behind them yeah? and therefore we don't become fanatical yeah? it keeps us balanced as well we're meant to become so mature as a movement that we can see the ultimate principle behind different situations mm -hmm. and this type of mentality comes when we follow everything properly but with a clear understanding as to why we are following I'm not sure how, how prevalent it is here but in London, when you have people from Hindu backgrounds who have some familiarity with Vedic teachings, you'll find that generally, more and more, their children don't practice either Hinduism or what to speak of Krishna consciousness. Right? And the reason why is because when there are certain practices and activities and they ask, what's the purpose behind this? Why do we do this? They get no answers. You understand? You can't give people a set of rules and regulations devoid of the purpose behind those rules and regulations and expect that intelligent people will follow. And this is a warning to every single person in this room, especially people who have children or will have children. Huh? This is again how practical the teachings are. You need to know why you do what you do. Hmm? Because the people who come to this movement they have special quality, they have sukriti, a gyata sukriti or sukriti, to come to Krishna consciousness. And they often are intelligent people. So if they ask either a preacher, or if they say it happens to be their parents, why do we do this? Why do you follow this particular process? Why do we follow these rules? And if all you can say is because that's how we did it traditionally, right? It's our tradition. Then your tradition will die. Hmm? This is how you kill a culture. This is how you kill a culture. You kill a culture by blindly, fanatically following a whole set of doctrines with no clue as to why. 
And then when the people leave that teaching, when the children leave that tradition, then the parents just sit there wondering why. What's wrong with them? Why don't they follow? Why aren't they like us? Hmm? A very, very, very serious point. So we want to follow, but we want to follow in knowledge of the goal. And the goal is very powerful. In the Mahabharata, one, of the, one, one, one very profound story is how the Pandavas, they were brought forward by um, Dronacharya, and he wanted to test them. So Dronacharya had put a model bird in a, in a, um, on a branch of a tree. And he called each of the pandas up one by one to ask them to shoot the eye of the birds. So he calls the first pandava up. So can you see the tree? I can see the tree. Yeah, I can see the tree. I can see the bird. Okay, don't worry about trying to shoot. You just sit down. He called the next one up. Can you see the tree? No, I can't see the tree. Can you see the branch? I can see the branch though. I can see the branch. I can see the bird. Okay, don't worry. You can sit down. Next one. Can you see the tree? No, I can't see the tree. Can you see the branch? No, I can't see the branch. Can you see the body of the bird? Yes, I can see the body of the bird. Don't worry, sit down. Each Pandava, as they came up, the fact that they could see so much was their disqualification. Finally, Arjuna came up. Yeah. So Dronacharya asked him, Arjuna, can you see the tree? Arjuna said, no, I can't see the tree. He said, can you see the branch of the tree? He said, I can't see the branch of the tree. He said, can you see the body of the bird? Arjuna said, no, I can't see the body of the bird. So Dronacharya asked him, Arjuna, what can you see? Arjuna's response, he said, all that I can see is the eye of the bird. And Dronacharya said, therefore you are qualified to shoot. Hmm? So we have to keep the goal in mind. Prima Pumata Mahan. We're not just doing this for the sake of it. There's, there's an entire spiritual world which makes even the best so-called mundane experience here look like intense suffering. You, won't, you can't pay the residents of the spiritual world to come here. There's nothing, and even Prabhupada, even he himself when he was speaking about how he was with Krishna and Krishna told him to come here, as compassionate as, as Prabhupada is, what did he say? He said, no way. That's his answer. I want you to, Krishna said, I want you to come down and preach. He said, there, no way. And Krishna said, it's okay. I'll let you live in nice places and I will bring my books with you. I will give you these books. And Prabhupada said, therefore I came. So this is our legacy. There is, there is a goal. We're doing these activities, but we're doing these activities for a particular purpose. And if you keep that in mind, it, your activity becomes alive. Hmm? It becomes alive. It's not just, I have to get this done. It's that this is another chance for me to come closer to Krishna. I've read about it, I understand it. If I do this, I'll become more purified. I wonder what amazing adventures Krishna is preparing for me as I, be, as I prepare myself by following these teachings. I want to read Nectar of Instruction because I want to associate with Srila Rupa Goswami. Hmm? Yeah. These things are always available. So please never forget the goal. Yeah. Let's move on. So that's the fourth principle that brings Vinashati, which, bring, which spoils devotional service. The fifth one associating with worldly-minded persons who are not interested in Krishna consciousness. Yeah? You'll see this recurring theme throughout, throughout Srila Prabhupada's books, association. Hmm? Association. Yeah? These devotees, when, the, when it says that the devotees are like, you know, are like Kalpa Vriksha, Chintamani, these are actually not, they're not, these aren't actually kind of Metaphors, they are actually that powerful. Huh? I was speaking to one of my god brothers, um, I think it was last weekend, and he made a very, very wonderful point. And I was, I was like, wow, this is really interesting. He says that what happens in the association of a pure devotee, and you see this, you know, we have the, what, the great blessing of Chandamuli Maharaj's association of us, 
you often find that very elevated devotees, when they're in the environment, people are different. Have you ever had that experience? When the elevated devotees come, when they're not there, there's arguments, disagreements. When they come, people are like, oh, they just feel more inspired to cooperate. They're in a better mood. And I used to think, I used to think, being kind of skeptical, I used to think, ah, oh, they're not really like that. They're just pretending some, because Maharaj is here. But my good prophet explained that actually that's not exactly the full story. Every single person carries their own atmosphere, their own consciousness, and it radiates out. So when the pure devotee comes, that spiritual energy is so powerful, it overpowers the lower modes. So when they're around, people who normally don't want to cooperate, they just feel, you know what? I feel like I, I feel, yeah, I feel I should cooperate today. It's like, you know, I, I don't know why. I just feel in a good mood. Like yeah, exactly. Yeah, you see, it's powerful. It's powerful, but there's there's another side of that coin. If the pure association of devotees has this effect, you should also understand the negative circumstances by being open-hearted in the exchanges with very materialistic people. Mm -hmm. I have personally seen there are some people, and I think you may have had experience, there are some people, there's so much in the lower modes that when you look at their face, you, f you, you can't tell if they're a human or if they're an animal. Yeah? Have you ever seen someone like that? You look at them thinking, he looks like a lion. Huh? He actually looks like a lion. His features are such, huh? the mode is so, he's captivated by such a low mode. His physical body is already changing towards the kind of creature he's going to be in his next life. Yeah? Yeah. Or someone else, you look and you think, this person looks like a pig. <laughs> they, I mean, they actually... They look, they so, everything's very kind of tamasic. They actually look like they eat like a pig. They snort, they don't speak properly. You think this person, they actually look like a pig. Amazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, it's actually amazing. Of course, you don't tell them that. That would be a bit too much. Okay. I wouldn't go that far. But it's amazing what's going on. The consciousness it's actually it's the key factor. The, 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 here is speaking about the avoidance of associating intimately with worldly minded people. Mm? And there is the other side, as Marge said. Therefore, we need to associate with pure devotees. Mm? We need, and actually, Bhakti Notaku actually explains that also. He mentions that point in Bhakti Loka. Rupa Goswami mentions that point. We want, we want to take association. Yeah? We want, if someone is worldly minded, we want to give our association or give them Krishna conscious association. But we don't want to be brought down by such an individual. Even the mundane person who seems to be doing well, you should always remember that karma is deadly because karma never remains. Huh? You have your millionaire who seems to be doing well. There was a documentary years ago. I heard about it. I didn't actually watch it. But it was about homeless people. And the funny thing was, some of the people who were homeless, they were previously millionaires. Can you believe that? Someone has gone from being a multi-millionaire to living in a cardboard box on the street. Huh? And you never can tell what type of karma a person has that can get them from point A to point B. Years ago, I remember speaking to my brother-in-law. I called him. We were speaking. He was 26 years old at the time. His name's John. So I said, John, how are you? He said, I'm okay. He said, but I, I've got a bit of a sore throat. That's what he told me. Two weeks later, we found out a bit more about his sore throat. He wasn't a sore throat. He had cancer. Right? A 26-year-old male, that, that was a tumor. The sore throat 
was a tumor that was growing in his throat. He had lymphoma cancer. Right? At one point, the tumor got so big, he had to be rushed to the hospital. It was pressing on his windpipe. He couldn't breathe. He was suffocating. So they rushed him to the hospital to perform some operation so he could actually extend the space. Hmm? And I remember thinking, I spoke to this same person two weeks ago. How many times has someone had a sore throat? Hmm? So we don't know what karma we have. So don't think that the worldly people are okay. Oh, but he seems to be doing so well. Huh? Just as a, as, a, as, a, as a linked point. Often, I've heard, over many years, devotees will say, you know what, sometimes the non-devotees, they're nicer than the devotees. Have you heard that before? You know, sometimes, you know, you know, yeah, I, you know, I want to be a devotee, but these devotees give me a hard time. You know, sometimes, you know, you know what, you know what, Prabhu? Sometimes the non-devotees, they're nice, you know, being with them is nicer than the devotees. So I'll share with you one point on that. I'm almost out of time. I heard a lecture, and it was a point that was really powerful. That in many cases, for materialistic people, even the nice materialistic people, if you took away their outlets for sense gratification, in many cases you see a monster. I know what it's like here, but I can tell you for a fact, if in London one day, right, there was no alcohol, right, especially on a Friday night, people would go crazy. If there was no soap operas on TV for one day, it would be, it would be chaos. In New York a few years ago, there was a power cut, right? And on the day that there was a power cut, there were the violence just escalated. People became so frustrated because they didn't have these outlets for sense gratification. So don't, don't underestimate the quality of the Vaishnavas. These people have made tremendous sacrifices to try to practice Krishna consciousness. So they may not be 100% pure at any one point in time, but they're on the path of perfection. Hmm? So even though your materialistic person may be a nice guy, when their karma runs out, or under a certain material situation, they can be completely different. See, it's not the same. It's not what it seems. Hmm? So therefore, anyway, the point is that we don't want to open our hearts and our value system to be transferred to a materialistic value system. And I'll tell you one other thing on this, and this is so important. The only way you can avoid it is not just to not um, associate with worldly-minded people, but you must see through the eyes of Shastra. Otherwise, you will see the, the devotees in a materialistic way. It's not enough to say, okay, I will give my association to materialistic people, but I won't take theirs. If you don't study the Shastra, when, when things go wrong or there's challenges in your devotional life, you will judge the devotees in a mundane way. Because that's what you're used to and you don't know anything else because you've not understood how to see them according to Guru Sadhu Shastra. It's a warning. Anyway, we're almost for time, so we'll go to the last point and then we'll stop. Okay, so... That is number five. And the last one is being greedy for mundane achievements. Right? It's very interesting. I'll just read you this as, a, as the last point. So, this is very interesting when I, when I read this. Bhakti yes, this is in Bhakti Loka. This is, um, this is Bhakti Vinod Thakur. And he's actually explain, he's quoting Sanatana Goswami. And he says... Even if one gives up all kinds of material desires, the desire for fame, interestingly enough, is very difficult to give up. This desire for fame, which is compared to stool, is the root cause of all anatas. Interesting, isn't it? Sanatana Goswami states this in the Hari Bhakti Vilas. Huh? Very, very interesting. We're actually almost at the time. My main point is that the same theme we're resonating throughout is application. And it's better that you take a little and you really use it, you know, that you change with it, that we run with it. We want to live this teaching. And if we live this teaching, you will relish like anything. Hmm? Because Krishna wants you to be successful. Krishna is more concerned that you come back to him than even you are to return to the spiritual world. Yeah? So we've been given these merciful clues by Rupa Goswami, and if we take these on board, our life will be sublime. 
Thank you very much for your time. Hare Krishna. Next of instruction, ki jai. Shri Rupa Goswami, ki jai. Shri Prabhupada, ki jai. Janita Gopramanandi, Hari Hari Bo. Hare Krishna, just a brief announcement. So RT is now, and then at 7 o'clock we'll come for the final lecture on verse number 5. Just a point that I just got inspired. This book, Bhakti Loka, that's been mentioned throughout these lectures, is, is Bhakti Vinod Thakur's going deep into these two verses, verse 2 and verse 3. It's a whole book about 150 pages, something like that, about taking these 12, six favorable, six unfavorable, into a more and more philosophical understanding. So the book's available, I know, in English. It's been out for at least 15 years in, in, in ISKCON. So I highly recommend it if you want to go deeper into these subject matters. Thank you. Hare Krishna.